The real estate landscape is set to undergo significant changes with the upcoming implementation of the National Association of Realtors NAR settlement on August 17th. Experts say it is the biggest shakeup the housing market has seen in nearly a century. So this settlement introduces new practices that will influence how buyers and sellers are going to navigate the buying and selling process moving forward. And it's going to be very different from what we're all used to. So if you're somebody that's going to be in the market to buying and selling anytime soon, you're going to want to listen because I'm going to dive into all the main questions that my customers are currently asking me in order to help you understand what this settlement looks like and how it's going to impact you, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Here's what you need to know in the information following. In the real estate industry, a real estate agent must be affiliated with a licensed brokerage to legally represent customers in the buying or selling of property. Now for this video, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to only reference the buyer's broker throughout, but I also mean the buyer's agent, both of whom typically receive a certain percentage of the total compensation payout. So if you've worked with the buyer's agent, let's just say the buyer's agent got 2% or 2.5%, that commission doesn't just go to the buyer's agent, it gets split typically with the broker and sometimes there's also a royalty fee and some other fees. All right, let's get into the questions. How does the NAR settlement impact buyers? Does the buyer have to enter into a buyer broker agreement before seeing any homes with the buyer's broker? Oh yes, this is a major change here. If the buyer's broker uses and lists properties for sale on an MLS, multiple listing service, you'll need to sign a written agreement before visiting any type of home together. This is to ensure transparency regarding the buyer's broker services offered and their cost. This also includes both in-person and live virtual home tours. Next question, does this imply that buyers are not obligated to engage a buyer's broker to purchase a property? No, you don't have to get a buyer's broker. Consumers have the choice to decide whether to utilize a real estate professional. But I can say this, that studies have shown that consumers greatly appreciate the services offered by a buyer's broker, especially if you're somebody that's in the market for the very first time, or perhaps you're somebody that's purchasing out of state or maybe even out of the country. Maybe you're a luxury buyer. So you have plenty of other things to worry about versus just trying to figure out the real estate market. There's going to be a lot of situations where it's going to make sense to get a buyer's broker to assist you in the process, but ultimately it's going to be your own decision. Is the buyer's broker compensation non-negotiable? The compensation is negotiable and absolutely not set by law. Will a seller need to offer a buyer's broker compensation? A buyer's broker compensation is not set by law. All agent compensation terms are entirely open to negotiation. That's the key takeaway here. Can a seller still offer a buyer's broker compensation? Absolutely, sellers are legally allowed to offer compensation to the buyer's broker. Could the buyer request the seller to compensate the buyer's broker if the buyer submits an offer to purchase the seller's home? Absolutely, yes, that's totally a possibility. So if there's no initial buyer broker offer with the listing and you're ready to put an offer for that home, you can absolutely request that the seller pay the buyer's broker commission. What are the different ways the buyer's broker can get paid? Well, there's going to be several ways in which the buyer's broker can receive compensation for their services. Well, if you're a buyer and you're interested in a home, it's very well possible that the seller is offering the buyer's broker commission or compensation. If that's not the case. You as the buyer, you can make that part of your offer. So you can ask the seller to pay the buyer's broker commission as part of the offer. If the seller says, no, I'm not going to be paying the buyer's broker commission or compensation. In that case, the buyer would be responsible to ensuring that the buyer's broker is getting paid based on what the buyer broker agreement is saying. Well, what happens if the seller's offers compensation to the buying broker is less than what was agreed upon in the buyer broker agreement? So in other words, let's just say you're a buyer, you have a buyer's broker agreement, it says 2% and you're interested in a home, the seller's offering 1%. In that case, you could ask, again, as part of the offer, that the seller include the additional 1% to the buyer's broker. And if that's not the case, if the seller says no, then you would be responsible to filling that gap. You would be responsible for the additional 1% 
to the buyer's broker. Next question, if a listing agent arranges an open house or grants property assets solely for the seller to an unrepresented buyer, will the buyer need to have a buyer broker agreement with that particular listing agent? And the answer is very simple, no, not in this case. What if the seller offers higher compensation to the buyer's broker than what was agreed upon in the buyer's broker agreement? The buyer's broker cannot accept compensation from any source that surpasses the amount or rate specified in the agreement with the buyer. We're now gonna pivot over to those questions that sellers typically have. Will a seller need to offer buyer's broker compensation? No. Broker compensation is not set by law and is fully negotiable. Can a seller still offer buyer broker compensation? Yes, per the NAR settlement, sellers are legally allowed to offer compensation to the buyer's broker. It's entirely up to the seller whether they wanna do so, and there are valid reasons for making such an offer. Can the buyer's broker compensation be displayed on the MLS? Information regarding compensation or bonuses offered to cooperating brokers must not be displayed, so no, anywhere within the MLS. But if permitted by the local MLS, sellers may choose to offer concessions to the buyer which can cover expenses such as closing costs or the buyer's agent commission. These concessions could be inputted in a designated field, but any listed concession must not depend on using or paying a buyer broker. So then how can a buyer's broker compensation be communicated if it can't be on the MLS, but the seller is offering one to the buyer's broker? Well, when the listing broker or the seller, maybe it's a FISBO, offers compensation for the buyer's broker, the listing agent or even the seller, again, if it's a FISBO, can share this offer through different marketing avenues, such as just having conversations about it with the buyer's broker, having social media posts go out, introducing it in flyers, signs, or emails. Also, a listing broker can share this information on their own website. So how does this settlement affect the listing broker's compensation? Compensation remains subject to negotiation, like it's been, and it's not set by law, and should always be discussed between the listing agents and the sellers. Could the buyer request the seller to compensate the buyer's broker if the buyer submits an offer to purchase the seller's home? Absolutely, that's a possibility, and I think it's gonna happen often. If the seller decides that there's not gonna be a buyer broker compensation with the initial listing, it's very real to assume that a buyer that has a buyer's agent or a buyer's broker is going to be requesting that the seller pay for the buyer's broker in the initial offer that they're gonna be putting towards the house. May not happen all the time, but I'm certain it's going to happen quite often. Why wouldn't you give that a try if you're a buyer? Could offering compensation to the buyer's broker increase the appeal of a seller's home to a potential buyer? I would say yes. Buyers frequently encounter various expenses throughout the home buying journey, including homeowner's insurance, down payment, title, lenders, home inspections, etc., etc., etc. A seller's home is going to be competing with all these different homes that are on the market, especially in today's market where inventory just keeps going up. And so if a seller is offering some kind of a buyer's compensation or commission, it's going to stand out from those homes that are not. So it's very fair to assume that it will help bring in more buyers. I believe I probably answered most of the questions that you have. If there's additional questions that you may have, just leave a comment in the comment section and I'll have a follow-up video. I'm also going to link to my website and on my website I have all these questions and answers already there in print, you can reference it. And what you need to know is that this is probably not over yet. I can imagine there becoming more changes in the real estate world. And that's because the Department of Justice is also getting involved right now and is intensifying the scrutiny that they're posing on the real estate industry, which includes ongoing efforts to reopen an investigation into the National Association of Realtors, so NAR. And I believe that ultimately this is going to place additional pressure on decoupling commissions. Follow what's going on in the real estate world, especially as it relates to the NAR lawsuit. And I will also make sure that I will provide you with the latest information. This information is going to be as of, well, July, 2024, 
and who knows, it may very well change. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, please like this video. Also subscribe to this channel. And I wish you guys the best of luck, the best of success with all of your real estate needs and wants. I'll see you in my next video.